Hey there, my name is Josh. I'm the pastor of Connection and Formation here at The Heart, and I want to welcome you to another study session. As you know, we've been going through each of our distinct values at The Heart, and these values are certainly ones that we highlight, that we feature for our church family in particular, but I believe that they are actually for any Christ follower to consider as far as how we might understand each of these concepts a little bit deeper. And so we've talked about what it means to be simple, to be called, to be true, to be loving. And today I want to talk about our value of mobility or what it means to be mobile. Now it would be easy for us to focus singularly or only on whether or not we have a building and that has kind of become the thing especially in the American church about whether or not you have a facility of your own but I'd like to kind of step beyond that and look at what it means to be mobile uh, when when it's not related to a building itself and that's not to say that there's anything wrong with a building there are certainly aspects of having a building of your own that make things easier but I want us to understand that, especially at the heart, we are not a mobile church necessarily as much as we are a church that values mobility. So before we get too much further along, I want to share with you what we have on our website as far as a definition of the word mobile. And this is what we write. Embracing our true identity, not through a church building, but in the unique, creative, and healthy ways that we intentionally live out authentic community as a body of believers. Mobility challenges us to apply the truth of God's word in our daily lives as we seek spiritual growth and act with grace-filled maturity. So again, I wanna look a little bit beyond just what it means to have a building. Again, our identity is not wrapped up in a building itself, but it's wrapped up in what we understand God to be calling us to. And I think that throughout scripture, throughout the Bible, we see that God is a missionary God who is sending a missionary people. Throughout scripture, there is language about sending or to send. It seems as though God is sending himself and he is also sending his people. And so if we truly are the hands and feet of Christ, if we're the body of Christ as the church, then you could say that we are a body that is sent, that we are meant to go out and to be with people. And so what does that mean for us? Well, I think a big part of it means that we need to understand that as a mobile church or as a church that is on the move, we have access to even more relationships than we would as a stationary body or a stationary church. Us going to people, being with people, moving towards people, wherever they might be, I think invites us into even more relationships than if we're simply bringing people to a place on a Sunday morning in particular, or maybe only. And so for us, I think it's something where we need to embrace this idea of what it means to be missionary, what it means to be going out into the wilderness even. But that can be a scary proposition for many of us. It was hard enough to become a part of a church body, to find a place where we felt safe, to find a place where we felt known and seen and heard. But I think that the next step for us is then to take that and to bring that to others and to invite them into something that's even greater than maybe what they know. And I think it's important for us to recognize and understand that God does not send us out into the wilderness alone. He is very much with us. He goes before us. In fact, we find in the Exodus story that God is very much going before us. There's a a pillar of cloud and fire that the Israelites follow while they're in the wilderness. And it says that it is constantly in front of them. And so you could argue that that is, very, that is God's very nature, is that he goes out in front of us. And then in the book of Acts, we read about how the 
Holy Spirit is within us. God's Spirit is within us. And there's a, um, there's a passage in 2 Corinthians that I want us to focus on this morning in particular to look at that and to maybe wrap our heads around uh, kind of a bigger understanding of what it means for us to be um, God's people, God's people who are sent. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul writes this, For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. So I think what we need to understand is maybe a couple of things. First of all, God is with us. His very spirit is in us. The light of the world resides within us. And then we are asked to go into the darkness in the very same way that God brought light into the darkness at the very beginning of creation. In Genesis 1-3, we actually read about how God brings light into the darkness and said it was good. And so we carry that very same light with us. But it's important for us to also understand that when we bring this light out into the darkness, God is already there waiting for us. And so it's not really about us at all. It's simply that we are partnering, partnering with God in his redemption and his reclamation of the world itself, of his creation and all the people within it. And so we can be confident going forward, knowing that we're not necessarily bringing ourselves, but that we are simply walking in obedience to God and with God, bringing with us the very spirit that he has imbibed into us. And isn't that an exciting prospect? Doesn't that remove a lot of the fear and trepidation that we might have when it comes to going and to being sent? I think a lot of times we can become complacent and comfortable and isolated and insulated when it comes to being a church because we're so focused on being a part of a worship gathering on a Sunday morning that we forget about what we're actually called to as something much greater. And that is to show the love of Christ to the world, to the community, to the neighborhood that we are a part of. And so again, we have the opportunity to reach people with the light of the world in ways that perhaps a stationary church never could or never would. And I've talked to so many people who would say that they would never show up on a Sunday morning to a worship gathering. And yet we are able to have conversations and we are able to have interactions with one another that very much are what it means for people to come together and to talk about faith and to do so in a way that is encouraging and uh, it brings growth and it brings understanding. And so the challenge for us, and I think a good one, is why wait until Sunday for us to experience that kind of authentic and genuine friendship and community? Why wait until Sunday in order for us to be with one another and to experience that kind of love and and um, just faith building and all of those kinds of things. We can do that at any point during the course of the week. We don't have to wait for Sunday. So again, it's not about whether or not we need or would like a church building. That certainly is something that other communities have decided that they want to have and there's nothing wrong with that but if that becomes so much a part of our identity then I think we're missing a very big part of who we are as the church as the missionary church that we are called to be and so what I want to do for the remainder of our time this morning is I actually want to show this video 
and it's one that I've shown before and it's called the moral circle and I think it gives a great kind of practical understanding of what it means for us to look beyond the walls of our church building, the place where we, um, where we worship, where we gather, where we can look beyond those, those walls and we can understand that there is a much bigger world and there's a much bigger adventure out there waiting for us that God is calling us to. And a lot of times we think of it in really big, kind of grandiose terms. But I think God is calling us to even the simplest acts of obedience, the simplest acts of recognition and awareness of the situations that we're in, the context that we're in, the people who we are coming into contact with. And if we come to recognize and to understand that where two or more gather in Christ's name, that is where he is, then I think that that changes the whole dynamic of that interaction. And again, it doesn't have to be necessarily where you sit and you debate the, uh, the Bible and you talk about all sorts of faith things and everything. It's simply about being with one another and genuinely wanting to be in relationship with each other. And that's what God is calling us to. God is calling us to this sense of connection that is true, that is loving, that is simple. And that's why I, I love <clears throat> this particular value of ours. Out of all of our values, this one in particular, I think, really resonates with me because it is the action statement for us. It is about us going and being instead of coming and receiving. And isn't that exciting, that invitation by God to go somewhere and to be with someone who we may not otherwise have the opportunity to do so with? And, and to have a conversation with somebody where something would be revealed about God, something would be revealed about us that maybe we need or that he's wanting, been wanting to tell us in so many different ways. And so let us not be afraid. Let us understand that God is calling us out into a great adventure, into the wilderness, not to be alone, but to be with him, to follow him, and to recognize him before us and also within us. So let's watch this video, and then I'll come back with a couple of thoughts. Let's just say this is you. You're the big red person. All these people around you are just the people that you come in contact with. Some are people that you're friends with. Some are just, you know, the, the checkout person at the grocery store. Everyone has a moral circle. And all that means is that the people that are most central to you there are going to get your most love and they're the people that you're going to be nicest towards. Okay, how many of you here have waited tables? So you guys know what misery that is. I have waited tables also. Imagine a friend, a family member, somebody you really care about is going to start waiting tables. They go through the whole training process. You get a group of people together. You go, you sit in their section. You're all excited first night. And they come over and they are just sweating bullets. Right? What do you say to them? Oh, don't, don't worry about us. Don't worry about us. Don't even worry about it. We don't even need drinks. I don't even like water. It's fine. We're fine. I don't even like this. An hour later, they come over and take your order. You ordered steak in front of you as cod. It's great. You love cod. Cod's terrific. We're going to eat this. This is going to be great. And then what do you do at the, over, at the end of the night? You overtip them, don't you? You overtip them. Now, imagine that same scenario and you have no idea who this server is. And they come and you know what? You ordered Coke Zero and this tastes like Diet Coke. So you stop making eye contact with these people. You start to do that mental math of the tip going down, down, down. I'm not going to even look at this person. You know, this is, this is ridiculous. We were paying for a good time. What is this? Two different types of behavior from us for two different people. One is your mom. One is your friend. One is your brother. The other one isn't. But the other one's somebody's mom. The other one's somebody's friend. The other one's somebody's brother. Why do we justify two different types of behavior for people that we come in contact with? We show kindness 
to our kind, meaning the people that are inside that circle are generally going to be people that you think are your kind. Ethnicity, background, financial status, age, orientation, family member, skill set, you name it, these are the people that I am going to give my most love to. Just imagine with me, how different would your world be if you just expanded your moral circle? What if all of a sudden the people in your church were known for treating other people in their society like family? What would that do to you? What would that do to your church? What would that do to your life and your heart? So what did you think of the video? It's a pretty good one, isn't it? I love just the, the practicality of it, the simplicity of it. It feels so right, and it feels so natural, doesn't it? And I think, again, it offers a really unique and really compelling challenge for us to look beyond ourselves and to recognize that we can, that we can care for one another in even the simplest of ways. And that if we just expand our moral circle, if we start to treat people not as strangers, but as friends, if we start to recognize them as the image bearers that they are, if we start to rec recognize them as the children of God that they are, if we start to recognize them as the co-heirs to God's kingdom with us, then I think it changes everything and our perspectives change significantly. And again, I think if we lay down our very selves, if we lay down our selfish desires, if we lay down our pride, if we even lay down our fear and our trepidation and our concerns, and we allow God to lead the way, again, I think that changes everything for us. So that's it. That's all I wanted to share with you today about our value of mobility. And if you would like to join a digital spiritual formation group, I encourage you to do that. Here's the information that you can get a hold of me. You can also look online and see how you can be a part of these groups that are meeting online and are talking about these kinds of things together and having fantastic conversations. And the great thing about this digital format is that people can get together no matter where they're at. Geography is no longer something that gets in the way. And so we actually have people from all across the country who are part of these groups. And we're hoping to expand that and to grow that. And so even if you want to participate or if you want to host, let me know or visit our website to learn more. And also watch for more of these study sessions. We're going to continue having these available online on our YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, if you want to subscribe to be notified when the next study session comes available or any of our videos come available, I encourage you to do that. You can do that at the end of this video. And with that, I would like to bless you with this blessing that we often share at the end of our services at the heart and it's one that I think is so fitting and so wonderful. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he remind you to go and be that you are a sent people set apart not to be better than others, but to actually invite people into something that is better than they could have ever known themselves. And so may he grant you peace in that.